to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. Here are four live podcasts for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. With me tonight is Jesse. Hello. And as Digitech, usual, Robert is off doing new, his thing. Uh, so uh, it's just us tonight. And uh, I first want to apologize for the longer than intended absence or vacation or whatever for the holidays. Two weeks became six. So I'd like to say that it was because we were at NAMM and hanging out, checking out all the new guitars. But <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't. It was just things came up. <laughs> so... Uh, but with that said, we do have a few things to talk about from Nam, so we would um, get into that here shortly. But uh, Jesse, what have you been doing this week, guitar wise? Oh, that's a good question. What have I been doing this week, guitar wise? I thought you were gonna—I forgot you were gonna ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, I cleaned up and adjusted a uh, guitar, actually. That I, uh, in addition to the normal, my normal noodling. That's that's my standard response. Uh, but I got this guitar that uh, I traded, actually. So that was nice. I found on Craigslist, which is a uh, kind of an older version of my baby, which is a court hollow body. And um, so uh, it was good, in decent condition. It's got some dings in it and cracks or whatever. Not that the one I traded for was in perfect shape. But uh, the good stuff is good. I mean, the frets are in good shape. Except for one, it has a high fret. I'm going to have to have that looked at. I couldn't bang it down. Uh, but it plays nice, so I clean it up and change the strings and everything. So it's like, woohoo, now I have uh, a backup, <laughs> which nice. is always good. Nice. And what have you been doing? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, working on a few things. Got two songs I've been working on. Uh, the Thrill is Gone by B.B. King. Awesome. I uh, decided I wanted to study uh, his style a little bit more, which mm-hmm. is a lot of vibrato and a lot of pentatonic. There's a little B.B. King box, if you will. Yeah. Um, playing with that and uh, working through the solos in that and uh, so I knew a little bit of that before but I uh, didn't know the solos so well so mess around with those and then I've been slowly teaching myself Back in Black which may very well be the greatest rock guitar song ever written. It really could be. Could be. You know I mean anytime you say something like that of course you'll always have your detractors and I'm sure all five of our viewers will be quickly uh, like in <laughs> <laughs> comments to the youtube uh, to say how wrong i am but uh yeah so basically got on to justin sandercore's website found his uh, video on basically playing malcolm's part just the rhythm part yeah and just have worked all my way through it and i've gotten all the way through it except for the very last part i'm just trying to work to get that in time with the recording yeah That's so awesome. yeah so i've been pretty happy maybe at some point i'll tackle the solo maybe not i don't know um, but it's a fun song to play and, uh, I picked it up faster than I thought I would. Yeah. It's, it's kind of deceptive. You know, it sounds kind of harder than it is. You yeah. Know? That's, yeah. That's kind of what I've been experiencing. So a lot of the ACDC stuff's like that. Cause the stuff tends to fall into the fingers pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of pentatonic stuff. A lot of just, you know, yeah, it's just good stuff. I, it's, it's um what did what did Justin say about it? It's it's not what they played, it's how they play it. Yeah. It's the rhythm that really makes it, you know. Definitely. Uh, ACDC. But um also of course uh the Fender Mustang three, still messing around with that, having awesome. a good time. Have to put together a review video at some point. Are you still in honeymoon mode? <laughs> uh, no, I think it's love. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now what a great amp. I mean it's the only amp I've played through since I've gotten it. Yeah. And I have two others. And um, I've started to uh, put my own, uh, to put some presets on it. I found mm-hmm. a couple of uh, presets on the web, downloaded those, put a few of those on it. I sound pretty good. And then I have started tweaking the presets, creating my own presets, you know, working with the software. It's just, it's all good stuff. Um, so a lot of fun with that amp. Awesome. That's a nice amp. I highly recommend one. <laughs> yeah, I definitely. Anybody who is interested in getting an amp and maybe doesn't want to drop the, you know, $700 on a tube amp. Right. And because they basically, like me, they play in their office or their bedroom or whatever. They don't have the space to get loud. They don't have, um, 
the desire to get all that loud. Mm-hmm. And uh, they just don't have necessarily the will to justify 700 plus dollars or whatever, you know, some of those we were looking for on an amp. Um, you can get this for, yeah, I think it was like 300 bucks. Sounds great. You can play through headphones if you need to. The software right. is a lot of fun. Um, you know, we did a bunch of ABing with other amps in the store before I bought it. And uh, I yeah, think that was anybody, fun. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun. And I think anybody who's mm-hmm. playing um, at sort of bedroom volumes will have a lot of fun with this. And then likewise, I mean, I've seen videos of people gigging with this thing and it gigs well. Well, that's the thing. I mean, you, you say it doesn't, it's not necessarily for somebody who needs to get loud, but I think that thing will get loud enough for, you know, a small club. Oh, yeah. I think, yeah. Uh, it'd be fine. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, but I guess what I was trying to say is it sounds good at low volume. True. Yeah, it sounds Which great. It's an advantage of, you know, the modeling type of thing is yeah. you don't necessarily have to crank it up to get a decent, you know, fuzz. Yeah. And I, I got the four button foot switch. Uh, my mom got that for me for Christmas. Sweet. That is awesome. That really transforms that amp from being able to turn on all the effects while you're playing as opposed to trying to hunt through the screen. Right. And, you know, turn things off that way. So that is definitely if you have the Fender Mustang three and you don't have the four button foot switch, I strong have your mom buy you one. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I really like um, it's a an excellent accessory. I'm thinking about getting the expression pedal for it at some point too. Even though doing foot things and playing guitar at the same time is is I think well beyond my skill level. Yeah. Yeah. That, the wah pedal you can get this expression pedal as wah and octave and all these other things. And you can set that up and I just, I can never get that to sound right. Right. So, so that's what I've been doing. Um, and of course, checking out Craigslist, checking out uh, eBay, looking guitars as always. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. What, what are you going to do? Yeah. So, um, I guess what we should do is talk about the, the main topic of today's show, which is of course, Nam, which has, uh, I think at this point just ended, or by the time you're watching this, certainly, certainly. it has, has ended. <laughs> and uh, there's a few things that really caught our attention. Um, and I guess I'll go ahead and start, because I had one thing that caught my attention that, that Jesse did not show me. Uh, the other things that caught my attention were because Jesse showed them to me. Um, and one of them, that one was the Sandblasted American um, Fender and Telecaster by Fender. And the full name is the limited edition sandblasted Stratocaster with ash body, according to the website. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it's a cool finish. So basically what they did, it looks like, is they sandblasted it after they put the stain on it. And it looks like, you know, you can feel the grain of the wood if you rub your hand. And it all the videos like suggest that. that, too. Yeah. And that makes sense because wood is not... You know, it's not homogeneous. It has like soft and hard where where the um, the grain is, and so the sandblasting would take out more in some areas than others. And and it does have that three D look to it. It's gorgeous. I mean, I'm a sucker for blue, but that blue black. Just go look at it, people. Yeah, you have to go. <laughs> it's really look cool. It up. Look up Fender sandblasted, you know, Stratocaster or Tele, whichever flavor you like, uh, and it's a fantastic looking instrument. Uh, I have to say, though, um, the price comes in at what I think is a reasonable nine ninety nine ninety nine. So basically a thousand dollars for an and American you, guitar, for an American Stratocaster. If you buy an American standard, you're looking at what thirteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. So this is a thousand dollar American um, Stratocaster. I don't know what the telly is. I don't have that on the uh, information right here. But here's the thing. Uh, if you have an older Strat, say pre twenty twelve, you're pretty not much not getting anything new. Mm-hmm. The the neck is nine and a half radius. It's twenty two jumbo frets. It's American standard single coils. The American standards now come with fat fifties, and so you're getting older quote unquote older um, pickups. And uh, you know it's it's the six screw trim the vintage mm-hmm. style bridge they call it yeah um so you know when you get this guitar you're basically getting it for the finish yeah i mean there's nothing wrong with the american standard single coils i've got them in the strap behind me and i love them don't get me wrong but the guitar is the finish 
Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But that's what draws your eye anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you want a strat with American single uh, standard single coils in it, there's cheaper ways of going about it looking at the used market. Um, but this is all about the finish here. Yeah. So so buy the guitar, strip it, you know, put whatever hardware and pickups you want on it. <laughs> yeah, so that's finish. <laughs> yeah, you buy the guitar, you put the the fat fifties or whatever or whatever you want to put in them. And uh, the problem with that, though, of course, I think the a set of fat fifties is about two hundred bucks. Well, honestly, I think the standard pickups sound pretty good. I mean, um, they're kind of a standard Strat glassy thing. I mean, and that may appeal to some. In fact, I'm not a big fan of the really overwound Strat coils anyway. So I, I'm not sure. I don't think the Fat 50 go all the way to like Texas, you know, heavy overwound. I think it's just sort of a little bit, you know, louder. Yeah. But um, yeah. So, but definitely go have a listen. And I, I really, a lot of it is the feel thing too. I mean, th- I like like the satin finishes, you know, they kind of feel, I don't know, organic or something. And I suspect this is kind of like that, you know? Yeah, I I really want to get my hands on one. We yeah, we got to go play. We gotta go so while one. we're out there looking for a Paul Reed Smith S2, oh, yes. you know, Maryland made uh, <laughs> semi-hollow. semi-hollow body. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. It kind of, that, that's not from Nam. That, that's older. It's been out. But um, they have a transparent blue uh, 22 fret, you know, S2. So this is like a Paul Reed Smith. It's American made, but it's not super expensive they run in the 1500 1600 range for the for the hollow one um so yeah we'll go shopping when, when the weather breaks <laughs> and for those that don't know jesse pointed out the maryland made thing because i'm originally from maryland so i didn't always think it'd be cool to have a maryland made guitar there you go uh, so yeah that would justify the uh so if i get one you can play with it anytime oh cool <laughs> <laughs> So, all right. So uh, let's go through a few of the things that stuck out uh, for you, Jesse, that you liked at Nam. So, um, well, the Epiphone came out with a Blues Hawk, which is um, sort of a Les Paul shaped uh, guitar with, uh, but semi hollow body uh, with P90s in it, which um, it looks really cool. I haven't seen one in the store yet, but I'd like to get my hands around one because it looks neat. You know, since yeah. uh, Les Paul came out with like the. Um, I forget what the original version of it was, but the semi-hollow Les Paul, it's kind of like, ooh, that's nice. You know, and then Epiphone had theirs, and so they're kind of coming out with different versions, I suppose. Yeah, and I don't have a guitar with P90s in it. Mm, So that's a reason to be really interested. Now, it comes out, it says spring 2015 is what their website says. So this is one of a host of new guitars by Epiphone. Um, the P90 Pro single coil pickup plus six position rotary Veritone is how they are advertising this. Now, I'm not actually familiar with the Veritone. Um, I'm not sure myself. It, I, I, there, I think there used to be a tone circuit that was sort of a passive uh, parametric type of EQ. I don't think it was battery powered. I don't think it was active, but it allowed you to, like one way it would roll off the treble, the other way it would roll off the bass. So it was sort of a you know, more um, flexible than just a standard tone control, which all it does is roll off the treble. But I don't know if that's what they're doing. It, it might be some kind of preamp. I'm just talking out my nose. <laughs> that's all right. Hey, hey, it's, it's cool to speculate. Yeah. And see, the colors are Midnight Sapphire, um, excuse me, Midnight Sapphire, which is that nice blue, uh, translucent black, which looking on the computer screen, uh, I don't think I like that too much. And then there is the uh, wine red. However, if we have friends at Epiphone um, listening to this right now and they'd like to convince me that translucent black is a beautiful color, please send me one. I'd be more than happy to inspect it in person. And I'd be happy to inspect the blue one. <laughs> <laughs> I love any color as long as it's blue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those transparent blacks are hard to do because it seems like if you get them light enough so that they're not so they show the grain. So you have a nice flame or, or grain, even if it's not a flame maple type of thing. It's light enough that you see the wood tone, so it's kind of off. It's not really gray. It's sort of, you know, wood colored or greenish or something. You know what I mean? Right. And then the ones that look more um, kind of black and whitish, you know, are, are darker. They tend to be that way. I don't think that's all always the case, but it seems to be that way a lot. It must be hard yeah. to do that that finish, you know, 
spot on. Yeah, this one, um, looking at it on the computer screen at least, does appear to be that green, grayish green kind yeah. of translucent black. Uh, which, yeah, it's got to be tough to do. And I'm guessing that, you know, it's maybe if you get up to the $25, $2,700 guitar price range where you see maybe better versions of that, if you see it at all, I don't know. I, I it's, yeah. it's not something I've really looked out for because I've never real, been a fan of the ones that I've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, so what else we got? Um, oh, I mentioned a semi hollow, um, a copy from Dean. It looks like other companies are starting to copy the, the hollow Les Paul type of thing. Um, and Dean is one of them. Um, but I haven't seen it. I just saw the link there. So I threw it up there. We'll put the link in the show notes. Yep. So you can take a look for yourself. I'll say this though: when you go to Guitar World, I don't know if you, if there's background noise at the beginning of the show. <laughs> it's like as soon as you go there, there's like <laughs> you know interviews and stuff. It just auto plays. So website, stop that. <laughs> yes, please stop that. I mean, it's not the '90s anymore. It's not cool. <laughs> at least it's not mostly MIDI stuff in the background anymore, right? <laughs> which is true. a little bit more tolerable. You know, another thing. Um, just get, going back to Epiphone again, they have a. Um, Gary Clark Jr. Black and Blue Casino that they've mm-hmm. also been showing with uh, Gibson USA P90s in it. Uh, and also it looks like a Bigsby uh, mm-hmm. vibrato uh, tailpiece. So that might be an interesting thing to get one's hands on just to uh, mess around a little bit. It's pretty much appears to me to be like one of the um, like a 330. Oh no, it's a casino. I'm sorry. I was going to say it's a 335. It's not. It's a casino. So that should be fully hollow, I think. Yeah, I would think so. I think that's the John Lennon guitar. Didn't he play a casino? Uh, yeah, yeah, I believe so. One of the things he played, yeah. Sweet. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. We definitely need to get to a guitar store soon. Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so what else we got? Um, no more guitars. Oh, I ordered one of these, by the way. <laughs> oh, <what'd laughs> Don't tell my significant others, but my other, but uh, a Floyd Rose for a tunematic guitars. <laughs> Oh, did you get one of those? I ordered one. It oh, has not arrived that. yet. <laughs> so okay. check this out. So the model is called an FRX. And um, it's been, I don't know if you've seen this, it's been out there since like 2010. Floyd Rose in, introduced this years ago. And um, it's never come out, never come out, never come out. And I just first saw it like, I don't know, six months ago on some, I don't forget what I was looking for. Cause I had gotten for my one baby, a, uh, which has a tunematic s- setup, um, a Stets bar, which is, uh, there's only a few solutions for a tunematic, you know, Les Paul SG style guitar to put a vibrato on. And most of them tend to be kind of crappy. I mean, you could do a, a Bigsby thing. You could do, um, there used to be an old Bowen handle. There's a, there's a couple other small things out there that'll give you sort of a slight wavery kind of thing, but nothing that'll go real trim action. Well, the Stats Bar was one that purportedly did. I got one. I like it pretty well. In fact, I have to put it back on the guitar. <laughs> but but Floyd Rose, of course, being Floyd Rose, you figure this is going to be like, wah, <laughs> you know, right. whammy. Um, but it hasn't come out until, and it's been like three NAMs they've had this thing. Um, well, now apparently it's actually coming out, and they're, they're sampling it out there, and there's people with them in hand. So uh, hmm. I put my pre-order in it should be in very soon so they say and yeah. i will definitely do a uh, a review and a comparison of the stats bar versus the floyd rose so which god awful way too much chrome overpriced trim do you want on your Les Paul? <laughs> <laughs> uh no trim on my Les Paul. i don't even use the one on my strat in fact i'm tempted to block it so uh i haven't gotten around to it yet but, I'll yeah. say this: they they both seem to be going the same way in that they want something that'll retrofit on a tunematic setup. That if you want to reverse it, you can. Um, yeah. Well, the Stats Bar doesn't have a locking nut mechanism. It, it trusts that you have locking tuners or a good nut setup or something like that. Um, the Floyd actually has a locking nut, but instead of having to remove the nut, it fits right behind your nut and has two small screws. So there, there are two drill holes in there and replaces the truss rod cover. Um, 
so it's kind of weird and interesting, and it was, we'll have to see how that goes. But it's neat that they're doing that so that you don't have to do too much damage to a Paul. Of course, if you've got a 59, you're not putting little pilot holes in your neck anyway. <laughs> I'm not putting pilot holes in the neck of my 2012, so... Uh... <laughs> but at least it's not like, okay, now we've got to route a big thing for one of the old Kalers or something like that, right. you know? I mean, and I guess with the, even with the Floyd, if you chose, you could just mount some Spurs L's on there and, and not do the... Uh, the holes, you know, so that you could actually totally restore it to, to stock. And that's, I think, a good thing, you know, for any guitar, but it's especially nice with the Pauls and SGs where, you know, you don't want to wreck your investment, I suppose. Right. So See, anyway, sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> well, I couldn't possibly put pilot holes in my SG. I don't have the same attachment to that guitar as I have to my Paul. Well, the SG is kind of more the metal guitar. Yeah, when you when you talk about you know playing behind your head and hanging it by the whammy bar and you know I, I see an SG doing that more so than a Paul. You can do that with an SG because the body's like an inch thick. That's true. <laughs> it's it's like at least mine's really thin. I feel yeah. like I'm. Uh, yeah, I feel like when I pick up that thing, it basically the guitar says the wood doesn't matter. <laughs> That's true. Also, because it's because so of, thin. Yeah. yeah, and it also tends to be neck heavy because of that imbalance so the extra weight and girth on the body from this big piece of steel might be just what you need <laughs> that could be that could very well be yeah um well that's exciting i cannot wait for that to come in because i would love to see uh this one as it comes in uh something that i thought about possibly putting in order when it comes out i don't think it's out yet is the trio by uh i think it was digitech yes yes what a cool pedal so the idea behind this is that you play some chords or whatever and, you know, you turn on this pedal and what it does is it introduces a computer generated bass and drum. Based on the, yeah, what you're playing. Yeah. yeah. Based on what you're playing. That's, that, I mean, if you go to the site, uh, I forget what site we linked here, Guitar World, I guess. Um, and they, they show it a little bit. There's a, a little video there and it looks pretty impressive. I mean, it it's, looks like black magic to me. Yeah, well, and it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be an interactive musician thing where he's going to come up with the, the coolest bass lines, you know. It's right. not going to be Victor Wooten or Billy Sheehan or anybody, but it's going to be functional, you know. It sounded good to me. So, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd like to play with one of those. I think it sounds as a, as a better option, necessary, uh, possibly a better option than going on the garage band or something like that, choosing one of the drummers. And having to go through all that rigmarole, have the computer on, set up, play it. Where if you get a pedal, just run the pedal to your amp, press the button, and you're off and going. Done deal. Now, the question is, and I would like to know, is um, if you play the same chord progression twice. So you play something, have the little drummer pop up, plays with you, turn it off. Play the same chord progression at the same rhythm. Do you get the same beat or not? Right. That's a good question. It's interesting because, like, so basically, how deterministic is it? Well, you know, well, when you change your playing rhythm, it changes the feel of the beat. Like the guy at the it's sort of towards the end of the little demo, he changed the feel of his thing, and it went from like a straight four rock thing to a more shuffle type of thing, if I'm remembering it right. And I thought that was impressive. Now, it may be, but I see what you're saying. It's like, is it going to pick the same bass lines? It's going to be very basic, no pun intended. Right. Or are the connecting notes going to be cool? And uh, that's a good question. We'll have to yeah, see. I mean, it's, it's, it's tough to play the exact same thing twice, right? Because right. we're humans and there's going to be little blips along the way. Yeah. So is it robust to those blips and will give you the same thing? Or does it pick up one of those little blips and give you something slightly different? Well, well it, it, I hope it's the latter. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. think we might be overthinking it. It might be that it's like it just figures, okay, here's this chord. It's a G major chord or something like that. So here's a bass line I can play, and it'll just arpeggiate or, or thump along on G with just a couple connecting notes and throwing in a third or fifth in there once in a while. Um, and maybe there's choices that you can choose. Okay, I'm... You're basically going to play jazz, or if you play a seventh chord, you might know that and throw a seventh in there or something. It's it's hard to say, and there's probably some randomization factor where it's like it'll choose between this four, sixteen, however many 
um, choices it has with mm-hmm. its little fills or whatever. And it'll just kind of throw random things in there because drum machines have been able to do that. It just never really did it on the fly <clears throat> based on what you're playing. So I, I don't know. This is all speculation. We've got to go see this thing and just play with it. We do. Um, we definitely do and see how it plays out. I would like to get a price on it and I haven't. Oh, uh, here we go. One seventy nine ninety five. Wow. That's cheaper than feeding a drummer for a weekend. (laughs) It is. It is. It's a lot cheaper than feeding a drummer for a weekend. And uh, they eat a lot of pizza. Yeah, it's the Digitech Trio Band Creator Pedal. And uh, this is just one website selling it at that price, so it'd be interesting to do a little bit of shopping around. But I expected it to be possibly three hundred bucks. I don't know why I thought that. That's just what I thought. Is that? Is that street price and 300 is MSRP? Because I had 300 in my head, too. Um, let me check out uh, Digitech's website here and see if they have the actual... And while you're doing it, I'll, uh, a little less interesting, but I just have to mention it, is the Digitech Bone Shaker uh, distortion box. <laughs> oh, really? Because I want a fuzz box called a Bone Shaker. <laughs> that sounds like it would be fun. Probably a cool fuzz box. Well, what looks good about it is it has a. It looks like it has a really flexible EQ. It looks like it has three EQ bands that are uh, all sweepable. So you know how like the Metal Zone had like like two parametric uh, pseudo parametric EQ bands. This looks like it has three, which would make it really flexible. Though it does seem to be toward the heavier lower metal sort of vibe, and I don't know if it does other than that because. It'd be nice to have that sort of EQ control with a more general distortion. You know what I mean? Like a 2 b yep. overdrivey thing. So I'll have to play with that and see what I think of that too. Well, looking at uh, – I can't find an actual MSRP. So um, this In Stuff Music, which uh, by the way, you're welcome for the free advertisement, uh, has <laughs> the pre-order price at one seventy nine ninety five. Oh, no. Wait, right here it is above it. Retail price two ninety five ninety five. So that's where we got it. Retail 300, yeah. So, of course, what people will pay will be 180. And Mm -hmm. what's nice about this light, though, is they do have a pretty good up-close picture of the pedal itself. And it has uh, five knobs. One knob is for genre, and they have blues, pop, alt-rock, rock, rock, country, R&B, and jazz. Mm -hmm. All right. And then there is a style button, which has lights and there's 12 um options and one starts at four four and 12 goes to three four i don't know if that's time it sounds like it would be time i don't know yeah Uh, there's a tempo knob and there's a knob for bass and drums which i would have to assume it is the intensity of the bass and the intensity of the drums by looking at the knobs yeah i think so uh and it looks like there is a um line in for a guitar and a control and a line out for a mixer and an amp. Cool. So looks like an interesting thing. So it sounds like it's a, a really sort of complex uh, beatbox that just, um, so you would select the style sort of, and then on the fly, it would figure out your, your key that you're playing in. And that's cool. There's not a metal genre. Hmm. Yeah. Unless they figure rock would cover that. Maybe. Maybe that's one of the other styles in this yeah. type of rock thing. Yeah, or all rock. Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, it could be that you turn a, the genre button and turn the style button to get to dial in. Yeah. I'm trying to think if 180 bucks is something I can hide from my wife. Not <laughs> sure. Not now. <laughs> uh, she's she's given up on the podcast by this point. She probably listened to it for the first 10 minutes. So I think it's safe to say that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, if I get an email or uh, I come home from work and she's uh, looking at me funny, I know that she listens to the whole show. So thanks, hon. <laughs> Make sure all the UPS deliveries go to work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, good call, good call. Yeah. So, yes, I think I have to say, of all the things at NAM um, that you've showed me or I've, I've looked around and, and, and found, uh, the trio is 
probably is what got me most interested. Yeah. Well, that's like the new thing. I mean, that's that's like the only thing that's sort of a, I don't want to say a game changer, but it looks like it might be something pretty unique. Whereas the other stuff is, you know, slight variations on guitar, slight variation on, you know, well, the whammy we'll have to see. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that awesome. plays out. Yeah, that could be really <laughs> but, awesome. Um, but yeah, so, and that's, you know, guitars have been around for a while, so it's hard to find something that's really new. Right. The Blues Hop does look interesting. I, I want to see what the price is. Yeah. If it's a, if it's an Epiphone $500, I'm in. We'll have to see what the what the shapes of the necks and everything are too. Well, it's like, that's just it. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at the the uh, PRS guitars, and unfortunately, the hollow body uses like their fat neck. Like, I guess uh, they have a few different neck profiles, and uh, they have like the wide fin, which is sort of the shredder neck, sort of you know, you know, and um, that's the one I would have chosen. So I, I don't know. I, I definitely want to wrap my hand around one. So we'll see. Oh yeah, definitely. It's the only way you can really be sure before you buy these things is to, to, to touch them and know what they're doing. So, well, uh, for our first episode back in a long time, we Woo-hoo! did pretty well. So, uh, <laughs> folks, if you liked our show, please click the like button on YouTube or subscribe through iTunes or YouTube. We Leave comments. You yeah, we'd like to know what you think. Uh, just don't be too brutal because we have feelings. We are people. And, uh, we have a couple. I have one feeling. He has one. Yeah, yeah. So between us, we, we have feelings two. between two. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, follow us on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow me at CW Call. You can follow Jesse at Jester Seven Hundred, and just let us know what we've been uh, doing right or what you'd like to see uh, more of. All right. So with that, I'll close it and just say, remember, boys and girls, just keep picking and grinning. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at jestercat.com. You can also email the show at sst at jestercat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 